Barbaros, you're the manager here. I'm a front office and fiber operations executive. Okay. All right. We've just come out and noticed this new toy over here. It is a garbage collection machine. Okay. Uh, it is very special design. Uh, it is belong to our group. Okay. So it's a setter designed yeah. piece of machinery. Yeah. Wow. Group. I'm Barry. I'm Anne Chef. This is the continuing journey of Sailing ABC. If you watched our last episode, you'll know that Baz has come back from the UK from his long hours of work. <laughs> and he did promise that he would share some information with you about yeah. that. So today's the day. It certainly is. I basically kept a, a little sort of log of where I was working and how many hours I worked. So I've broken down the figures to just a couple of numbers that might interest you. So I was away for 62 days in total. Um, I worked a total of 54 days, which means there was eight days where there was no work available for me. 12 hour days, I did 35 of those. 11 hour days, I did nine of those. 10 hour days, I did eight of those. And there were two nine hour days. And uh, i tell you, it was, it was pretty, um, it was difficult to say the least. Basically living on a boat for nearly five years and then having to go and do physical labour, uh, lifting huge pieces of steel um, and being in, you know, in, in a 12-hour non-stop go, go, go uh, work day was, was pretty gruelling. I think after the first week of 12 hours, the hours didn't matter but still, the steel was, was heavy. Hey, talking of steel, what about your steel boots? Oh, the steel boots. So, of course, you've got to have all these safety equipment. Um, OHS in the UK is everywhere now. Paperwork, paperwork, and do this, do that. Um, so, we obviously had big overalls on. We had to have working gloves on. We had to have bump hats, uh, which are basically not like a, a proper worksite helmet, but uh, just a cap with the uh, bumps inside. The, caution you if you bang into something. Um, you found out they were useful didn't you? I did and um, the boots so not only steel toe cap boots but also a steel sole in the boot to stop glass and nails coming, coming through the sole and, and injuring you. So these boots were heavy so you know you're walking around for 12 hours with like um, you know the old-fashioned divers with the lead boots that they had mm. so it felt like that. Uh, and of course, there's very little give in these boots, and so your feet conform to the boot. And I basically lost all sensation in the tips of my toes. I, I still, still can't feel the tips of my toes. It's just numb. Gosh, those poor guys that actually do that as a full-time job. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't much I could do from where I was, so I um, sent him some... Uh, Oh, insoles, insoles with a, with, an arch which I support. Would help. It did help a bit, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> I should have bought you several pairs. I think I, I lost sensation in my heels, but they've they've come back. So it might be a, a good sign that eventually <laughs> my feeling in my toes, toe tips, will come back. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I won't be doing it again. Put it that way. But you know, other apart from the fact that it was physically grueling, which I I mean I see as sort of like a hero's challenge, to be honest. Right. You know, you've come back, you've, you've got the posse goal and you've come back. But, and that was the dragon that you were facing, like <laughs> all of the hard stuff. Apart from that, um, one of the plus sides is that Baz, a lot of Baz's health conditions cleared up, including long COVID. Yeah. Um, I mean, you had a few sort of things, you know, like dandruff. And yeah, I had dandruff. That, that's gone now. Um, I had sort of a weird uh, fungus that was appearing in, in my ears. Uh, that's gone. Um, <laughs> that, there, 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 there was scaly, scaly bits of skin uh, that were forming on, on my eyebrows. That's gone. Yeah. A little bit of my belly's gone too. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot, just a bit. Just a bit, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that was that was my yeah, so experience of the UK. Yes. How was your experience of those 62 days while I was not here? It was fabulous. Oh, God. <laughs> Honestly, I felt really bad because the first two or three weeks, almost immediately after Baz stepped on that plane to go to the UK, 
I had invitations to birthday parties, lunches, dinners, all my friends really looked after me because they knew that I was on my own. And so, um, you know, even, even sort of being invited to a, a special deal on a five-star hotel, which is just down the road, so we had access to the bar, um, two full uh, buffet meals and all of the swimming pools and it was just fabulous so of course I wasn't not going to go um, but obviously Baz saw some photos <laughs> I think poor man I was you know I was trying to keep low key on it because I realized that he he was he was in a massively different place and I think as well with the long COVID, like you were very depressed as well. Yeah. I think I think yeah. that was something that's also cleared up, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so that, anyway, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I was partying <laughs> and having a great time, um, and then after about three weeks, it all kind of settled down, and I got into my own little rhythm of you know editing one week and just chilling or doing sort of daily things the next week so it was for me it was kind of nice to get back into my own rhythm because um, you know I haven't done that for many many years so it was actually good to see what's sort of important to me now and how I do life now and <laughs> you know I was a 60 odd year old so <laughs> emphasis on the odd <laughs> odd yes um, <clears throat> anyway that's that's the basic breakdown of, of the trip to the UK yeah. and the next bit that's coming up I think you'll find interesting we were walking out of the marina the other day and we noticed a large group of the marineros all gathered around and we saw something in the water that was a bit odd yeah, I think you like yeah. this yeah Barbaras, you're the manager here. I'm the front office and harbour operations executive. Okay, all right. We've just come out and noticed this new toy over here. It is a garbage collection machine. Okay. Uh, it is very special design. Uh, it is belong to our group. Okay, so it's a setter designed yeah. piece of machinery. Yeah. Wow. Hodge group. Okay. It looks like a manta ray. Yeah. The, the little flaps open on the front stop yeah. everything coming back out. Now it's got to find some rubbish. Very similar to uh, a drone cot controller. But it's also got um, GPS positioning too. Hmm. Amazing. It's a windy old day here at Finike Marina but it's a good wind because it's just blown in our latest patron. So welcome aboard to Glen Knight and a well-deserved last name. You, sir, are definitely a knight. Baz is changing a light switch. Mm -hmm. One light switch. Look at the state of the boat. It's very hot, you can see he's sweating. So it feels like it's on that same cable, doesn't it? Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. And this is Mike helping him. There you go. <laughs> Job's only taken two days so far. <laughs> What's the issue? You're looking a bit hot there, mister. It's a bit warm today, what is it? Uh, it says it's only 34, but... Yeah, they're lying. They're lying. <laughs> so, what have you lost? <laughs> oh, is that? There's definitely something there, isn't there? I've got a connection here. Yeah. With my little finger yeah, in there. Yeah, made, made a hole bigger. <laughs> um, apparently they've lost a wire. There's a wire missing. We can't get the headliner down. No, the headliner, this, is stuck firmly and it just seems impossible to get down. So. Yep, two days later we're still playing. Um, anyway, I'll leave you to it and hopefully we'll show you some success. Got it! Got it! Come on! Hey, mate, you look fucking easy now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah!
Yay! Well done! God, blimey! So, so on a boat, when you go, I'm just going to change the switch. Do it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, good job, boys. <laughs> I'll leave you with it, my beer's got more. Uh, right, thank you very much. <laughs> Both jobs. Okay, now for the moment of truth. Yeah. Well, let's see. Oh, look at that. Well done. Was that worth it? Yes. Also, you'll notice that we don't have any uh, saloon cushions at the moment. And that is because uh, we're just having them recovered. And new foam put in the ones that, w that are really flat where we've been sitting. Um, for the last four and a half years editing so um, I'm taking the opportunity I've taken stuff out from there and there and I'm just giving it all a good clean um, and that's everything that's here and here it's a special day for somebody on board ABC today July 29th has rolled around once again another year around the Sun for Ansha <laughs> <laughs> and in 38 degrees Celsius of heat um, she's trying her best to make her hair look right, and you, did you decide against makeup? <laughs> I decided against makeup because it's just going to slide down my face. Right. <laughs> so. Well, at least when we get out the boat, there's going to be a bit of a breeze. Yeah. So yeah. where are we going? We're going to. I think we'll go to Nor Pastinessi because I know the one in Cash makes the best cake. So I'm hoping that the one here does the same. So we'll find out. All right. Cake time it is. Okay. My favourite coffee and cake. <laughs> right, so we got here and found out that they've got aircon inside. Yes. And we're sitting right underneath it. Now, they don't do espresso coffee, so I'm having, but actually it was too hot for coffee, so we're having cold drinks. And look at this, isn't it gorgeous? It's the cake you've chosen, eh? Yeah. Books out to the ready. Right, go on then. Okay. Actually, we really need two plates, but anyway. I won't be eating a lot of it. Yum. Oh, I'm going to get that in my mouth. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, yeah. Meanwhile, I'm just a dripping mess of sweat. <laughs> I am here. Yeah. That wonderful chocolate cake and uh, three bottles of fizzy pop and a water. And a water. Uh, 55 lira, which is approximately five Aussie dollars. Okay, so we've come to this marketplace just over the road because uh, we're looking for something to put my feet into that are not these. They are hot in the sun. A bit um, blingy, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Diamantina. <laughs> so I came here the other day and they were just laying that white fine uh, sand, I guess it is, um, to be able to lay these on. And at the time I thought, are they going to tarmac over that or are they going to do something else? Well, obviously they're doing something else. And I think they've chosen the wrong time of year to do it because it's all done by hand and as I keep mentioning it's 38 degrees Celsius which is 100 Fahrenheit and they've got a long way to go. It's not just this road, there's four other roads they're doing it to in town and they're big long roads. Well sadly we didn't find any suitable shoes in two or three places that we looked at so it's going to have to be these for a while unless we can go online and find something. But we did find this. Ye ultimate fly zapper. Yep. Because if there's one thing that you do collect on a summer's day, it's flies. They love to come indoors into the shade, don't they? Yeah. And they start in the morning, <coughs> just when it gets light but you haven't woken up yet, and they dive bomb you. Yeah. And then at lunchtime, when, when it's really hot and you want to just crash out on the bed, there's about 500 in the room. Yeah. And then at night time, whatever's left just zaps you until you sleep, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so. it was 175 
Turkish Lira, which is about $17 Aussie. Less than that, yeah. Yeah. So, figures that's a good investment. Happy birthday. Thank you. I've always <laughs> wanted one of these for my birthday. <laughs> you want to open it? Yeah. It's got a little emptying tray for all the dead flies. I noticed. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Let's try this, see if it works. Okay, so, so we're a bit limited with the length of the cable. Yeah. So we're going to hang it up in here for now. Okay, ready? Yeah. You're going to get it? Yep. Yeah. <gasps> Ta-da! All right. Okay, so let's fly. Flies, come on. They've all booked it off now. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it works. Okay, the sun is going down at long last. It's still hot. Still boiling hot, yeah. yeah. Um, so we've had our cake. Yeah. They didn't do coffee, did they? Well, they did. They did miss coffee. Yeah, it doesn't count. Um, so, so now... Lots of cold fizzy drinks. Yeah. Uh, we've done our shopping, yep. Yeah. Uh, and now we're going out to the happy hour at the local pub, colloquially called the Red Lion. And then we're going to go for a meal yeah. at Alton Sofra, which is just there. You've been there before. We've taken you there several yeah. times before. Yeah. But oh, oh, happy birthday to my birthday twin, Fleming. <laughs> oh, yes, Fleming, thank you very much for uh, your buyers of beer. Um, we're going to put that to good use tonight, and I hope you have a great day too. Thank you, Fleming, that was really, really kind. There's the restaurant, there's the bottle shop, there's the red line. We don't have to go far at all. <laughs> so we're having a lovely time. And we're staying later. Yes, I'm just worried that we'll lose our tape. No, we oh, that was lovely. Our friends turned up. Yep. That was cool. Yep. A lot of friends out sailing. Yes. Obviously, it's summertime, you know, yes, that's, that's where you should do. be. Um, but. Um, Hopefully, we'll get there. Nah, look, it's so empty. And it's oh, only yeah. like literally seven minutes past seven. Yes. So, we're not late. No. From a female perspective. <laughs> and if, if they've got the aircon on, I want to sit inside because I'm dripping still. Sit outside. Okay, it's your birthday, I'll drip for you. Okay. They haven't got the air cut on. No. There's the machines. Non functional. And no tables available inside. Merhaba. How are you? Good. Nice. Look at that. Reserved. I'm not sure if this reflects the general um, situation across Turkey, but I mean, obviously, we're not in a tourist town. Finnegan is not touristy at all. Um, cash is, and we've heard reports it's busy. But here we are on a Friday night. It's quarter past seven, and um, might be a bit early because people are waiting for the heat of the day to disappear before they eat. But really. This place is uh, still waiting for what, what is three tables, including ours. Good choice of mezes, that starters. And uh, we've chosen a really lovely fresh fish to have between us. Yeah, a small salad and the small chips. Yeah. Yep, all good. And it is definitely getting a bit cooler now. Yeah. The sun goes down on those big mountains. The fish has arrived. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, good, it? Here's half. <laughs> There's the other half. <laughs> There's the other half. <laughs> and here is the finished result. Sorry. Empty plates. Empty yummy. plates. Oh, Tashi Kale. Wet ones. Um, 
Turkish style. They closed for a while during the winter. Long one. Yeah. Roadworks. Um, but during the, you know, during the times they were open, they came uh, quite regularly. And, uh, you know, we get recognised now, which is nice. Locals. Locals. <laughs> I'm stuck. So as we walk out of the restaurant, um, this is the, the park area that they're just finishing off behind the marina. And well, it's as not you... past the marina. It's um, owned by the council. Oh, it's, it's yeah. council park. Yeah. 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 But they've got LEDs underneath all this woodwork here, where you can sit down and lights in the trees. These LEDs. Uh, up here which change colour are absolutely brilliant. Beautiful how they put all these trees and plants together because when they're fully grown they're going to be fantastic. A couple of little places where you can get a tea, a coffee, coca-cola, soft drink, whatever. Um, and there's a huge uh, kids playground area down here. Have all these wonderful little bird houses. Then it comes into this huge flat concrete area, toilets, male or female, and then some sort of stage area. And behind that concrete block is um, what I would guess would be dressing rooms for whoever's on stage. So this is designed for an audience. There's also a lot of motorbikes going round and through. Because this leads to the swimming area off the marina wall. And this gate here leads to inside the marina.